Wisconsin Eyes Campaign 2024 programming is sponsored by Wisconsin Counties Association, Nicolay National Bank, Wisconsin Hospital Association, Operating Engineers Local 139, the Wisconsin Realtors Association, the Wisconsin Laborers District Council, and North Central States Regional Council of Carpenters. To support programs like this, please consider a tax-deductible donation at wisi.org slash donate or by texting WISI to 44321. of Green Bay is the Republican candidate for the 30th Senate District. The election is November 5th. Jim Rafter, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for participating in our candidate interviews. I want to start by asking about your campaign's key message. Why are you running for this office? My key message is unity and progress. The state of Wisconsin has so much to offer, so much opportunity. And we just have a big stalemate in Madison. We have political polarization. And what I want to be able to do as I have as village president is bring people together. Most of the issues that we talk about or will be talking about on a daily basis down in Madison, people agree on where we need to get to. We normally disagree on how to get there. So if we sit down and realize that we all agree on the goal and really focus on how we get there, I'm looking forward to doing that. What's an example of a bill that would be a priority for you to introduce? Well, there are a lot of them, but I'll say I'll start with anything related to cost of living. When I'm walking around talking to folks, the biggest concern I hear from young and old is the cost of living, the cost of housing, the cost of buying a home, the cost of renting, the cost of buying food, the cost of buying clothes, the cost of sending kids to school, the cost of childcare. The cost of living has gotten out of hand, and I think there are things we can do at the state level. What's an example of a bill that would address some of that? A bill would do something to cut the taxes. Uh, cut taxes or provide zero interest loans to developers so that they can develop lower cost properties, right, without incurring a lot of interest. Working with local municipalities to cut the red tape and reduce the cost of permitting. So any bill that would do what, reduce what government does to help with the cost of living, that would, that's what I would focus on. So if you're elected, you'll be yeah. entering at, during biennial budget season, yep. the state is sitting on a projected more than $3 billion surplus. Yep. What's your top two priorities for use of that surplus funding? First of all, we are sitting on a $3 billion surplus. That means the state of Wisconsin has overcharged or overtaxed its citizens by three billion dollars. We've got to figure out how not to do that because more often than not when there's a three billion dollar surplus the government's going to try and find a way to spend it and justify it. We can't do that. We have to find ways to push money back into the communities whether that's directly to the taxpayers or to the municipalities who deal with our residents on a daily basis, provide the roads, provide the services. So will you put that money back in tax cuts to residents then? Tax cuts, yep. What about spending? What, what is a priority area for spending any of that surplus for you? Any of the surplus? I am really not for spending money that we haven't budgeted for. If we need more money next year in the next biennium, let's budget for it. And let's, because we agreed to a budget, we collected more than we thought, and so that should go back into the system. Into Most or all of it go back yep. in tax cuts. Yep. Uh, K-12 education is a priority for many voters. What's your campaign's top priority or focus for K-12 education? All of our kids deserve an excellent education. Wherever they live, whatever their socioeconomic status, they all deserve a quality education. A lot of school districts across the state are hurting financially. Uh, we have increased, or the state has increased, the funding for schools in the la last year. 
we need to continue to do that. Right now, the Green Bay School District is going for a $183 million referendum just to keep their doors open. Do you think the state should be sending more money to public schools? I think we have to talk about that and make sure it's justified. It seems like it is justified. Uh, the cost of educating kids is getting more expensive. It's because we have more needs for teacher assistance, help in the classroom. Uh, we have to let teachers teach, and then we need to pr provide them the support that they need to get the job done. What about higher education? What does that look like for you, four-year colleges, two-year colleges, technical colleges? Uh, what do you think the legislature should focus, focus on in that area? All of them. And the reason is we have uh, young, young adults, students, who have skills for the trades. And so we provide that education for carpenters and welders and electricians and plumbers and CNC machine operators. We have a great technical school system. And we have a great four-year school system. Uh, they're fi facing the same financial challenges that K through 12s are, that municipalities are. We're all being asked to look internal, look at our processes. They say they need more money from the state. They say they need more money from the state. And I'll be very interested to learn how they're spending their money uh, and to see if there are efficiencies that can be had. I know every school is looking at that. How do we do more with less? But at some point in time, you can't, right? So let's focus on making sure we're giving these kids an education that will help them get a job right and get a good paying job so related to that what is the state's largest workforce development challenge in your opinion and how would you propose addressing it as a parent of two adult children who moved elsewhere after they got out of school wisconsin has to do everything they can to attract workers we have to sell the state we have a tremendous state as you know just so many riches here and the people here are great so let's sell the heck out of Wisconsin. Let's get the businesses here. But just as importantly, let's sell it for the workers. We have to make it easier for people to work in Wisconsin. Uh, the licensing process for a lot of our professions is mired in red tape. Let's let people who are qualified to work, work here in Wisconsin and make it easy for them to do so. Investments in public and energy infrastructure grow our state's economy. These investments also provide an opportunity to invest in our state's workforce. But currently, there are no requirements for hiring local workers. Would you support a state resident hiring requirement for state, local, and utility scale infrastructure investments? Whether it be a requirement or a preference to, one of those I would support. I would be very interested in learning what are the ins and outs of that? What are the pros and cons? But we want to make it easy for people to work in Wisconsin. And so if preference can be given to those who work in Wisconsin to get those jobs, I'm all for it. Employee or for those who want to move to Wisconsin to get those jobs. Get those people moving to Wisconsin. Yeah. Employee classification is an issue in the construction industry. Some employers misclassify workers as independent contractors or pay them in cash off the books. Mm -hmm. This lowers costs by avoiding payroll taxes and unemployment insurance, and it puts compliant companies at a disadvantage when bidding on projects. Plus, misclassified workers may be denied minimum wage protections or overtime pay. Are you aware of this, and what do you think should be done about it? I am. It's, it's an issue in the construction industry. It's an issue in like Uber and Lyft and those types of uh, businesses. And we have to have rules in place, laws in place to protect that, and we have to enforce them. Uh, as you said, there are businesses are hurt. The businesses who want to support local business or our economy and do so in the right way, provide benefits to their employees, provide good paying jobs and pay the taxes associated with that. They're at a great disadvantage to those who classify people as contractors. On the other hand, the employees, as you say, if they are called contractors, they have to pay more in taxes. They have to pay their health care. They don't have 401k benefits. There's a lot of disadvantages. So we have to protect both sides and make, make everything equal. Uh, 
affordable rental housing is an issue in Wisconsin. Yes, it is. Some have proposed government-imposed rent control to maintain affordability, while others argue keeping rent artificially low will decrease rental supply, resulting in increased prices. What is your sense of housing as an issue, and which best addresses rental housing affordability? Rent control, or building more rentals, or other? Good question. As we said, housing is a huge issue. And the cost of houses today has skyrocketed, and so therefore have the rents. And today, a young adult trying to save to buy a home can't do so because they're paying the rents. Uh, so we have to reduce that cost. Rent control, I'm not a fan of. Uh, I am a fan of doing everything we can to help the industry lower the cost of housing, create more housing so there's larger inventory, less competition for that inventory, which will bring the prices down in theory. Medical systems are facing numerous headwinds in the form of inflation, workforce development, and issues around Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement, resulting in fewer services and even the closure of a hospital system in western Wisconsin. Yeah. What would you do to preserve access to care and prevent future closures? Well, we have to do it. And when you hear about systems closing, primarily in rural areas, uh, we have to find a way to make that work. And part of it is finding employees to go work in those areas. Um, so we have to incent, right? Let's incent the workforce to, and I know we have in the past, uh, I don't know where that stands right now, but in order to uh, get the staff that we need and to be able to keep their doors open, we need to be able to find a way. And I look forward to having those conversations. Uh, mental health care is also a growing concern yeah. for Wisconsinites and concern for state and county budgets as well. In your district, what are you hearing on this issue and how would you address mental health care? Mental health, unfortunately, is rampant in our society. Whether they be young adults, older folks, uh, in schools, our kids. I talked about talk to school counselors and the need for school counselors to support these kids so that they can get through life. They're becoming their counselors. Uh, that's a tough, tough thing to do, but we have to find a way. As a state, I think we have to work on public-private partnerships. We have many people who are experts in figuring this out. We have some of them in the Northeast Wisconsin uh, who I know very well, and they have ideas. Government can't fix it. Government, along with private industry, we can. Uh, abortion policy. Yep. How should Wisconsin move forward on the issue of abortion? The people that I talk to, and I talk to a lot of people about this, no one wants to see a woman go through an abortion. Nor does anyone say they are not for life, right? So that's our common ground. Most people I talk to say that to deal with this issue, we need to do a few things. One, we have to focus on trying to dramatically lower the, the number of abortions that take place. We can do that by increasing access to birth control. I'm very open to looking into that. Secondly, we have to give, people say, we have to give women enough time to know that they're pregnant to make an informed decision. Thirdly, Is there a number of weeks tied to that? That's the discussion we have to have, right? Uh, I've heard all kinds of numbers, but let's agree on what we agree on. Let's sit down. If it comes before the legislature, right? We don't know that it is, but if it does, we have to sit down and say, okay, if the only thing we don't agree on as a collective whole are the number of weeks, let's figure it out. We can, right? Uh, and then lastly, there have to be exceptions. People said there have to be exceptions for rape, incest, and in the case where the pregnancy is uh, threatening the life of the mother. Uh, transportation. What are the pressing transportation needs in your district and how important is it that these needs are addressed and for the state to keep on schedule with the reconstruction of our aging interstates and significant corridors of commerce? As a village president, I know all too well the cost of roads. And in the last several years, the cost of reconstructing a road has doubled. That's a tough thing when you're looking at the state budget, right? But we have to find a way, uh, whether that be to negotiate better with developers, 
or come up with incentives for providing great roads, I don't know, improving the quality of our reconstruction efforts so that they last longer. But there isn't a resident in the state of Wisconsin, I don't believe, that's in, not interested in more roads. Right? Improved roads, yes. Improved roads. Um, PFAS and other water contaminants yep. are a concern for a growing number of Wisconsinites. Do you see this as an important issue, and how would you propose addressing it? Wisconsin loves the outdoors, right? We love our hunting and our fishing and our snowmobiling and everything that has to do with the outdoors. And an awful lot of that has to do with our water. Of course, we need good water quality for drinking and not contaminating people. But, and PFAS is a big issue, especially in northeast Wisconsin. And I know there's been legislation proposed and passed uh, to deal with that. And I hear that there's more to do on that uh, with the governor. And so I look forward to getting involved in those conversations. Cleaning up our waterways as a whole, there are many efforts going on in the state of Wisconsin right now, northeast Wisconsin as well. Alloway is bordered by the Fox River on the west, East River on the east, and we feed, both feed into Green Bay. We're working together with the farmers, with industry, on better ways to keep pollutants out of our waterways. But it's beautiful to see everyone working together. I'm very hopeful that these initiatives are going to work, and I know they are working, so we can spread those throughout the state. We are down to the final two questions today. Okay. Uh, how would you describe the leading differences between you and your opponent? Well, I can speak to me. As a family man, as a husband of 38 years and a father to two children, I have lived the life of a family, and I know the hardships of putting food on the table, finding quality housing in a safe neighborhood with good education. And I know how to navigate that. And I've helped do that in the village of Alloway, and I'll be able to do that in the state. Secondly, on a professional level, I'm a small business owner. I've worked in technology for 40 years, helping businesses, small and large, to use technology to be more efficient in their businesses, to attract and retain customers, attract and retain employees, improve customer service. So I think I bring a lot of skills to the legislature that not many have. And lastly, uh, as a political off, uh, office holder, I have been, as I said, the, on the village board for 10 years in Alloway. I've been the village leader as the village president for eight. I know intimately the challenges that we face at a local government level. I know where our authority stops, and I know where the state picks up. I've developed great relationships at the state level. So I think going into Madison, representing the needs of Northeast Wisconsin, I'm very well suited to do that. Final question. Let's say you're elected. You, have, you get this magic wand. You can wave over the state capitol yes. and resolve any one issue in a way that brings everyone together, all parties together. Yep. What would that issue be? That issue, there are three, if I may. I would go back, I would roll back our cost of living to pre-2020. I would eliminate drugs, violence, and sex exploitation in our world. And I would have a world where everyone got along. I know that sounds like a panacea, but you gave me a wand, right? Yeah, powerful magic so wand. So my wand would go up down to Madison, wave it over the state legislature, figure out where we agree on things, shake hands, put down party lines, and talk about how we move Wisconsin forward. Thank you, Jim Rafter of Green Bay, Republican candidate in the 30th Senate District. The election is November 5th. Jim Rafter, thank you for talking with Wisconsin Eye. Thank you very much, Lisa. This programming is brought to you by our generous sponsors. Thank you for watching.